Well, we have a fun story for your Monday. In the digital age, communication around the globe happens in an instant. But there is something to be said about nostalgia and a link to our past. In this week's Positively Fort Wayne, we take a stroll back in time to see how a local group of amateur radio operators, or hams as they're called, still communicate with Morse code. Ken Rodner and his group of local ham operators are history buffs, but in the day of modern communication, oh, that's beautiful. it begs the question, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Why use Morse code? Well, first of all, it's a lot of fun. I can't, can't say enough of that. This is a Lionel telegraph key from about 1942. It's an, kind of an archaic way of communication, but um, how many people know Morse code? Surprisingly, quite a few. Well, Morse code's been around for, what, 150 years or so, starting off with uh, telegraphs back in the 1800s. This is a key made in France. And it was the earliest form of communication over the air. This is a Soviet spy telegraph key. It's a really simple way to, uh, to make fun contacts with people around the world. We broadcast over the air just like uh, Wayne TV broadcasts over the air. I mean, not exactly like Wayne 15. Morse code has its own unique language. Every letter of the alphabet is made up of dits and da's. A dit is and a da is so you learn to listen to the dit and the da, and then you started learning combinations of that. For example, the letter C is da dit da dit, and you put a little rhythm to it as da 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 dit, which makes it a little fun. Pat. Pat is pretty fun. There's some other practical applications besides just fun, you know, during emergencies when uh, it might be hard to make a radio contact using a different mode. It's not quite as fast as using the internet, but it's not always about speed. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I've been a ham since 1978, so that would be about, what, 45 years? That's a long time. Yeah. Yep, and, and I, I'm not tired of it. It's, it's, it's always a lot of fun. Granted, signing off for our Positively Fort Wayne stories would take a little bit longer. Okay, maybe a lot longer. But that doesn't make it any less cool, right? Wayne 15. Wow. <laughs> and there I tell you, you what, go. if there's a common theme to uh, our Positively Fort Wayne stories that we do is passion. Yeah. And, uh, and these, these guys have such a passion for what they do. Yeah. And clearly they enjoy it. And uh, it's just kind of cool to be connected to something from the 1800s. Absolutely. It's so unique. Something, you know, and I love about these stories is we're always learning something right. new. And this has taught me so much. I didn't know there was such... Um, a following for this, right. I guess. So yeah. awesome to see. Yeah, the dits and the da's. I had not heard of that. Nope. Special thanks to our photographer, Danny Huff, for uh, finding this story yeah. for us and telling us more about it. So uh, pursuing that story, awesome. we appreciate that. And if you want to learn more about Morse code, Morse code, uh, as I should say, or how to get involved, we do have links to some local groups in this story on Wayne.com. And to see the story again and all of our Positively Fort Wayne stories, just head to Wayne.com, hit the News tab, and look for Positively Fort Wayne.